Amen. 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 Truly, it is a blessing to be with you this evening. Um, first, I give honor to Christ, who's the head of my life, and I'd like to thank Pastor Tyner and the First African Baptist Church of St. Mary for giving me the opportunity. But most of all, I thank the Lord for giving me the opportunity to minister to you tonight and as the Holy Spirit ministers to all of us. Let's pray. Eternal Heavenly Father, I come in prayer thanking and praising you for who you are and thanking you for this opportunity you've given in time. We just look forward to fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. Not in my words, but let thy words be said. Hide me behind the cross, none of me and all of you. Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Um, if you would turn if you, to First Corinthians chapter 10, and I'd like to congratulate you on your anniversary. And I tell you, it's just a great thing what the Lord is doing because he's giving us an opportunity that we've never had before. I know things may look um, like they are, but I can tell you at this time that nothing catches the Lord by surprise. The God I serve is not a reactive God, but he's a God that knows everything, and nothing catches him by surprise. But you and I, well, that's a different story. That's a different story. Do you have First Corinthians chapter 10? I'd like to read, um, if you would please cast your eyes upon verse 15. And I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. It says, I am speaking as to wise and sensible people. Judge carefully and thoughtfully. Consider for yourselves what I say. Is the cup of blessings which we bless at the Lord's Supper not sharing in the blood of Christ? Indeed it is. Is the bread which we break not sharing in the body of Christ? Indeed it is. Since there's one bread... We believers, who are many, are united into one body. For we all partake of the one bread, which represents the body of Christ. And and, and if you would look at verse number 13, it says, No temptation, regardless of its source, has overtaken you or enticed you that is not common to human experience. And I'd like to speak from the topic tonight on your anniversary, beyond human experience, one beyond human experience. And I believe with my heart, you know, and if you just to look over in Timothy, Paul told Timothy in the last days perilous times will come. And he says that men will be or men shall be and and that word time is described decades, it, it, it describes to us what, or illustrate what will things look like, kind of like prior to the Lord's coming. And it says, it says that each decade will present a new level of hurt, harm, and danger. If you just think about the time that we've lived in, um, over let's let's just start at 1900. Let's let's start when 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 first African was established in the 1800s. And so we find that each decade would present a new level of hurt, harm, and danger. And 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 and, and so as we get farther in time, that new things will present itself. New challenges will present itself, such as what we're facing now. And, and and the thing is, it's really, you know, this is totally new to us. This is the way that we have in church now. And like I told you before, God is not reactive. He, he knew about this. That's why he had people designing the methods in which we minister prior to any of this happening. This this technology, the the, the ability that we have, 
is 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 just remarkable now the way that we can just continue to be able to minister and to get ministered to because of technology so and nobody just invented these things these things is already at our disposal and so you know the lord tells us and and and, and the holy spirit has shown us through god's word that god has prepared his people for whatever comes forth so I'm not talking to those who don't know. I'm not talking to people who are not familiar with the Holy Spirit, not familiar with the Lord, his death, burial, and resurrection. I'm not talking to individuals who don't know the scriptures. So we know the scriptures. So let's go to another level if you want. The Lord says what I want to do is everything that you can encounter, everything that you can go through, is not beyond or uncommon to human experience. You know, the, James says that, that man is tempted when he's drawn away on his own lust and tight. And so we're not talking about human experience. And to get an understanding of what the Lord really wants us to understand, if you was to go to verse 1, he says, well, I do not want you to be unaware believers. And and the message tonight, God has given this to me by revelation because he wants his people to understand what we need to do beyond human experience. The Lord says, well, it's my desire for the church to be able to move into another realm because we have churches everywhere. We talk about the power of the Holy Spirit. We talk about the way, and if we look throughout the Bible, and at that beginning of this, it's talking about Israel, when they were leaving Egypt, when God was taking them to a promised place and this land that flows with milk and honey, talks about the presence of God went before them. And if you look, um, it says that they did eat of the same spiritual food and and talk about drinking of the spiritual drink. And, and then it goes on to say that that spiritual rock which flowed from them the rock was Christ. That's what it says in verse number four. And so we find that the children of Israel, the things that we're facing, the children of Israel face, they had the presence of God. Now, let me tell you, let's go over to the spiritual because we're talking about spiritual things here. We're talking about things that's beyond the experience of man. And so what we have here is you'll find that when God was with Israel going out of Egypt, it's the same way he was at pillar of fire at night and the cloud by day, that when Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection was accomplished, Jesus said to us, I have given you a comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. And so he we go on to find that he says that that comforter is going to lead you, he's going to guide you, and he's going to bring to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. And when we look at the word of God, now I don't know about you, I know the Bible, but I don't know every word in the Bible. I do not entangle myself with things that are too high for me. And so we find here that, that, that as we look around, this experience is talking about practical contact. That's what experience is, practical contact. That's in the noun. But in the verb, it's unexpected. So experience is talking about unexpected, um, if you look at it. in the time that we're living in is what we call unexpected experience, unexpected contact, the way that we've got to go about. But I tell you right now, when we all get ready and we're able to assemble again, what God is doing is he's assembling a people that will look at what tempts most men and will realize that I have my eyes upon a better prize. And, and so what we do is if we'll be able to come back together again, the Lord says, I'm going to have a people that's going to be strong it's going to be like Ezekiel in that 
valley of dry bones. He looks at things and he says, no, when I get through blessing Israel, when I get through causing the four winds to fall upon them, when I get through moving in a mighty way and, and cause this body to come together, he says, it's going to be an exceedingly great army. And so uh, as I continue to talk to you, it's talking about it. As we look here at this word, it says, what I don't want you to do is love anything more than me. I don't want you to love technology. I don't want you to love things. I don't. It's talking about idolatry. I, I don't want whatever it is that you idolize, that, that you just love and you cannot do without. The Lord says, no, I don't want you to love nobody, nothing more than you love me. And so as we begin and as we look down here, it talks about, in verse 16, the cup of blessings which we bless, the communion and the body of Christ. And the Lord says, or the Holy Spirit tells me, says, up until now, what we do is we look at communion as the breaking of the body of Christ. We, we look at it for what it is. It is we, we just leave him with the stripes. We just leave him with the shedding of blood. And the Holy Spirit says, no, I want to take you beyond human experience. You know, think about the things that man is able to do. I mean, they could take your heart out and put it inside of you, thump it, and cause it to be. Man can, can, can do transplant lungs. He can think about the ability that man, I ain't talking about just buildings and things like that. But I want you to think about the technology that we're using now, the methods by which we can talk. Man is remarkable, and man has done some great things. And so we get to the point now where we have become so engrossed and so in love with the things of this world. You know, so now the Lord says, well, I tell you what, it's no longer about a building. It's no longer about a denomination. It's no longer about what you think or, or what you say, because the truth is, don't nobody really know what's happening right now but the Holy Spirit. But it tells us, that, but he reveals to us the secret things of God. He reveals to us the plan of God. He reveals to us the love of God. He reveals to us the methods of God. And so you'll find that in, 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 in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it talks about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So as we look at the body of Christ just being broken and we look at the bloodshed, yes, we're beyond human experience, which I know God is a healer. You know, we need to be beyond the point of knowing the very things that, that we cry out for God for and we just just hold on to the Lord for things beyond our control. But if man has experiences, man has had contact with it, there's nothing beyond man's experience that is in God. And so we find here, he tells us, he tells us, he says, look at the bread. Look at verse 17. For we being many are one bread and one body, for we are all partakers of that one bread. See, the Lord didn't intend for his body to stay broken. The Lord didn't intend for his blood to just be shed. The Lord says, what I'm going to do is the way that this body is broken, I'm going to give you a gift. I'm going to give you a gift. And, and the Amplified says that we are united. The Lord says, what I want you all to do, what I'm doing right now is I'm getting my body ready. The church, not denomination, not not who your pastor is or what particular word you read or where you worship. It's not about that anymore. It's no longer about man. The man has to forget about himself. I am getting my body together. And when my body gets together, I'm going to cause the gifts that I all have planned 
for them. You know, we look at the miracles that the disciples did. Wouldn't it be great to walk up to somebody and tell them, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give unto thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Walk. Wouldn't it be great that we can walk up to people and, 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 and we can just tell them in the name of Jesus the Jesus that I serve, Jesus that died for us, that shed his blood for us, the power and authority that he has given us, you are healed. Wouldn't it be great to be able to just do the things that, that, that the disciples did and to be able to the full gifts of the Holy Spirit in operation in our life? So, brothers and sisters, I challenge you today. I ask you today, let's go beyond human experience. Let's step from the carnal to the supernatural. Let's walk in the Shekinah glory of God. Let us be able to do the things that God said that we should do. He says, now, you've gotten so comfortable inside of buildings. You've gotten so comfortable with the way that we are. But we're at it. I told you all to go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. I told you to go cast out demons. I told you to heal people. I told you to do the work of the ministry baptizes them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He says, people, now is time for the latter rain. You know, we have talked about the former and the latter rain. We talk about the day of Pentecost. Well, it says now in the end that that latter rain is going to fall. And when that latter rain begins to fall, it's going to move, cause my people to come together. No longer will my body be broken, but my body will be whole. So we forget about apostolic faith. We forget about the Baptist faith. We forget about the non-denomination. We forget about Church of God in Christ. We forget about the AME doctrine. We forget about the Lutheran doctrine. Let us get back to the unadulterated word of God. So I thank you. I praise you. And once again, I wish you a very, very, very happy anniversary. So the Lord says, let me take the church beyond human experience. Let me take you to a place that I've always intended for the church. And it tells us, learn from Israel. The Lord says, I wanted to take you from Egypt to the promised land, but you let doubt, you let fear, you let the thing, everything I told you was over there was there. The figs was big. The grapes was big. It truly, the land flowed with milk and honey. But you look at the obstacles and cause you to wonder. So the Lord says, I'm tired of my church wondering. I want us to come together. We know about it. We know that we can do above and beyond. And we know that we can do according to the power that worketh in us. So let us let the Holy Spirit use us. I thank you. I praise God for you. And uh, thank you again, Pastor Tiny. Amen.